Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the Property and Investor podcast. I am, of course, of your host, Paul Lanfear. As ever, nothing in this podcast is financial, legal, health advice, or always seek professional help. These, as you may have noticed, the All Star podcasts are a little bit different to the long form podcasts that we do. These are um, very brief conversations, chats that I'm having with people that I've had the absolute pleasure of spending this year with as part of my inner circle group. And it's with genuine delight that I introduce today's guest, which is Michael Utley. Michael, how are you, my friend? I'm very well, thank you, Paul. Good. So uh, tell the good people a little bit about um, your background, uh, in because in, obviously you've had a very successful career previously to property. Um Tell them a little bit about your background and also what you are currently doing in property. Uh, my background is uh, textiles in Yorkshire, West Yorkshire, Halifax, uh, where we manufactured garments uh, for three generations. My grandfather was making garments for the MOD between the wars. So that's, it goes back a long way. But uh, that came to an end, sadly, in 2005. Despite various efforts to keep going, it was really uh, non-profitable to do that any longer. Um, the market's just changed so much. Um, however, uh, you know, you, you look around for something else to do, and uh, there was I did come out, I did come out with my pension fund reasonably well topped up uh, through from commercial property, and that's what really gave me the flavour for commercial property and the experience with commercial property. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I've uh, in uh, recent times. I then moved. I had a divorce. Came into all that, and so it wasn't a straightforward event. Uh, it was just life as it comes out. You find out that these things are part of <laughs> what goes on in life. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I moved from Halifax or Hebden Bridge, rather, where I brought the family up to uh, Harrogate, uh, where I've been living now for the last fourteen years, and uh. Didn't do an awful lot for a short period, and then I opened some service departments in the town centre of Harrogate, and those have been extremely successful. Uh, Harrogate's a nice town with a good conference trade, uh, both winter and summer, so we don't have a problem filling those. And uh, as I've just been saying to Paul, pretty easy to run, really. We don't, uh, as an operator, you don't have a huge amount to do. Um, You've got, you know, you've got the obvious things of running a business, of course, but mm -hmm. you know, beyond that, it's not hugely stressful. So that uh, makes life easier. Mm -hmm. um, and then, looking for something else to do, I started to go into uh, an inquiry phase, really, on on commercial property and conversion from residential to commercial, mm -hmm. so from commercial to residential, where I just saw the opportunity with the setback in with COVID and the setback in. Uh, uh, the retail scene being completely uh, decimated following COVID and the growth of Amazon and so on, mm -hmm. uh, left a lot of vacant premises in and around every town in this, certainly in this country and other parts of the world as well. So there was clearly a, an opportunity there to get in, do some developments and um, end it with a nice profitable unit with uh, smaller retail units underneath on the ground floor mm -hmm. and then above SA units um trading um offering service accommodation in the town so that's all went very well really mm -hmm. uh, and i've been doing that ever since uh it's been more tricky the recent years because we're now in what tw end of 2023 the whole of 2023 really has been quite tricky with the recession and so on mm -hmm. so uh, it's been useful to have people to talk to who are in the industry and understand business and, and understand what's going on uh, to try and uh, come up with the right deals and not uh, primarily not get over geared, really. I think was, that's the uh, mm -hmm. risk area. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing, really. Um, and that's great because it brings together, you know, I mean, you were doing, when you were in the textiles business, obviously you were involved in retail at that yes. stage and, and you know 40 shops and all the rest of it um mm. and your marriage marrying that historic work that you've done with your kind of new direction of travel which is the SA business in Harrogate so that's a lovely blend isn't it well um, yes it, it, it 
and and naturally like getting out of bed naturally understand because it was drilled into me right from the kitchen table at the age of 16 or something mm -hmm. the benefits of having uh if you're having retail units having them in the right locations mm -hmm. and so i became it was in, in, inbred into like being in my motherboard as to what was a good what made a good retail street and what made a less good retail street mm -hmm. so that i thoroughly understand and um that's colored my thinking on you know where i want to be really because mm -hmm. if you're not where the people are <laughs> your business is going to be very limited yeah absolutely and one of the words of wisdom that you've frequently shared with the group as well which i think really rings true certainly obviously in property but clearly it comes from your wealth of experience in industry is this whole concept of look you make money on the day that you buy that's the truth of it that yeah. um which i think has been excellent advice during the course of 2023 because it you know it's not been a year that's been without difficulty for a lot of people in the industry no that's correct i mean anything i've ever done i've found that you make your money on the way in it's not going to get better because you bought it yeah, other true. than the obvious improvements but you know yeah. if you don't get the purchase price right in the right location the end result isn't going to work out too good yeah i totally agree so give us a bit of a snapshot of where you were before the program what problems or challenges that you were sort of wrestling with well about... wrestling with really um Funding deals, to be honest, um, that was an issue, um, still is to some degree. Although I've learned a lot this year from you and what you, how, the way you've done it, mm -hmm. and the way other people have done it. And but I'm still exercising an awful lot of caution as we move into 2024 because I think there will be more deals coming forward, and you know the need to be cautious on gearing and so on uh, has been well spent out, uh, well underlined by. The recent joint venture deal i got involved in in the midlands or, mm -hmm. i won't name it but you know the one i mean <laughs> yeah, of course and uh, in terms of like where we go from here well i think that also i mean it's worth acknowledging that that you know you, you we have the benefit of listening to those years of experience that you've had that you know you are um you take like a really sensible attitude towards risk a sensible attitude towards debt a, set, a sensible attitude towards gearing which i think it it's valuable for people to hear and i think that is like that i think they those are like the words of wisdom speaking the years of wisdom speaking in, in terms of where you you kind of um now are like you know what, what you felt like you benefited from from the inner circle um how are things now how have you progressed what kind of things would you say on that uh well it's in hard nuts and bolts terms, it's given me a uh, well, a lot more. It's given me probably eight or ten uh, contacts within the industry, including yourself, who uh, uh, know locally uh, what needs to be done and where to get specialist trades and where to get hold of uh, people to do certain jobs if I need it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that. Uh, everybody needs at some stage if you're serious about being in the property business. Yeah. Uh, so contacts primarily there. And the stories from people that have done similar things uh, mm -hmm. does help to uh, smarten up your view and take a more uh, holistic view, perhaps, of where you want to go and where you might end up if you don't follow what's been told. <laughs> other people's experience learning from other people's experience really. uh, exactly so obviously being connected to the network which you know is valuable invaluable for all of us and um yeah learning from other people's experience yeah that makes that makes total sense so then in terms of like what's the direction of travel now michael like what's the future look like for for you well caution in the early part of 2024 again um mm -hmm. we're not all right i think interest rates probably have peaked now and I think they'll start to come down. They're already seeing signs of that. Uh, I don't think the market in terms of residential is going to pick up in the near term at all. I think it'll be 2025 before that starts to happen. Mm -hmm. So more caution, but just look at more deals really. And when something that's really sings to you, sings off the street at you, that's when you go. That's yeah. when you find a way of moving. 
Fantastic. And hopefully we'll we'll come across one or two of those during the course of the year. So what would you say to anybody who's thinking about uh, joining Inner Circle? Um, what would I say? If you don't go and talk to people, you're never going to find out. You're not going to. It's very hard to steer a, a, an entrepreneurial business or any business uh, mm -hmm. with a boardroom of one, <laughs> <laughs> which is where you end up. Yeah. Uh, so, unless you're part of a large, you know, multidisciplined corporation, um, inevitably, and everybody I've met in this group uh, is in that position. Mm -hmm. So, other people's experience is bound to be valuable. One hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, if anybody's listening to this podcast and they're interested in connecting with you, uh, you know, because they're interested in projects that you might be doing in terms of your commercial to resi stuff with the retail at the bottom or indeed obviously your service to accommodation or any indeed anything else what's the best way of connecting them to you is it linkedin is it facebook is it somewhere else uh facebook really and i just send me an email if, if the details are in there i do I, I do pick up messages on linkedin but not as regularly okay. uh, facebook is the real place i use to be honest Perfect. So with your permission, I'm going to put your Facebook profile and your email address in the show notes. Yeah, that's great. That's lovely. Paul. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to meeting you at some of the breakfast meetings, which I shall be attending in 2024. Oh, fantastic. Music to my ears, Michael. Well, look, thank you very much, um, not only uh, for today, but also for spending the year in business together. It's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. I love enjoyed our meetups, our walks, all the rest of it. So thank you very much, Michael. And thanks for doing the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for all for the app. Thanks, everybody, to listening to the podcast. And um, please give it. <laughs> Michael's giving me the, the shackers. I'm going to have to get a, a screenshot of the shackers. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the podcast. Uh, <laughs> wishing you the best of luck. And click on the link below to join us at the next breakfast. Many thanks indeed. Take care. Thank you, Paul.